Hello, and welcome to this Secure Programming for C++ course presented by EC Council. But now let's talk about what you're going to be seeing in this Secure Programming with C++ course. And so our course here is going to be broken up into eight different sections. We're going to start out with an introduction to C++, starting out right with C++ programming. From there, we're going to move on to proper data management. There are a variety of different ways that an application can misuse um, numbers and strings. And so we'll talk about integer overflow and underflow vulnerabilities, format string vulnerabilities, and how to properly and securely use streams and files for writing and printing data. After talking about data management, we'll dive into memory management talking about keeping data where it belongs in a computer's memory and ensuring that an application isn't vulnerable to exploitation due to poor memory management. From then, there we'll move on to pointers and object misuse. So C++ is an object-oriented programming language. We'll talk about that more in our first section in Introduction to C++. And so as an object-oriented language, C++ makes a lot of use of pointers and objects. And so in our fourth module, we're going to talk about how to properly and securely use pointers and objects to ensure that you're not creating vulnerabilities in your code that could allow an attacker to cause crashes or gain access to memory that they shouldn't be supposed to. After that, we'll talk about injection vulnerabilities in our fifth module. So broadly speaking, injection attacks are when an attacker takes advantage of poor validation of user input. You put a form or a input field out for someone to write something in and expect them to be well behaved. Injection vulnerabilities happen when you make that assumption that they'll be well behaved, but don't validate that they are. And so the most well-known type of injection vulnerability is probably SQL injection, which deals with databases. But we're also going to talk about several different types of injection vulnerabilities, how they can be exploited, and how to remediate them in your code. After that, we're going to dive into concurrency. Parallel processing is great. It can allow code to run much more quickly and efficiently by taking advantage of multi-core processors and running multiple threads in parallel. However, that same parallel processing can also create issues. If you've got code running in parallel, you have the chance that um, different threads will step on each other's toes, causing unanticipated impacts. There's also the chance that two programs or two threads running in parallel could allow an attacker to change the state of a application in between two instructions that were theoretically running one after another. And so in that module, we'll talk about some of the potential race conditions that can exist in an application and how to deal with them. After that, we're going to talk about errors. Code has errors. There, are, No matter how well you write code, there's a chance that something's going to go wrong either in your code or under the hood. You may try to allocate memory, and it turns out that your disk is full, and so that memory allocation fails. And if that occurs, you need to ensure that your program is capable of identifying the error and handling it in a way that either allows it to move on or fail gracefully. A failure to properly handle exceptions and errors could open up a application either to a denial of service vulnerability where someone crashes your application or potentially other exploitation. And so in our seventh module, we'll dive into how to ensure that your code handles errors properly. And finally, we're going to talk about industry resources and best practices. Um, we can only cover so much in this course and it's often helpful to have a reference to point to when you're developing to determine what is the best way to do this, or are there particular types of vulnerabilities that I'm not considering when I write this code. And so our final module is going to talk about where to find that information in case you need it to ensure that you have the resources you need to write the best C++ code that you can. 
And so that's an overview of what we're talking about in this course. Our prerequisites in the course are fairly simple. We're doing C++ development, and so you're going to need a C++ development environment. And there are a variety of different options here. If you're running Linux, you can go simply with a, a text editor and the G++ compiler that's built into Linux. And that's actually what we'll be doing in this course. However, if you want a more fully featured and slicker environment, you may want to work with an integrated development environment like Visual Studio. And so depending on your background and personal preferences, you may already have an IDE that you like, that you're familiar with, and that works with C++ code. And so we're not gonna force you to pick a particular one. However, it is good to choose one and have it set up in advance before starting this course so that you can work along with the exercises, pause the videos to try something out, and do some projects. And so now, finally, let's talk about our goals for this course. We're going to talk about identifying common vulnerabilities in C++ code. And so as we saw in our course roadmap, we have several modules devoted to large vulnerability classes and families. And so in each one of those modules, we're going to talk about certain types of common vulnerabilities and actually look at code that contains those vulnerabilities. So we'll talk through the code, what it does and what it does wrongly. After that, we're going to work on developing tests for vulnerable code. And we're going to base this off of real world exploitation. If you know that a certain vulnerability exists in a code or want to find out if it exists, often the best way is to do that is to develop a test that does exactly what a hacker would do to exploit your code if that vulnerability exists. For example, if you want to know if your use of SQL has an SQL injection vulnerability, you write SQL injection vulnerability exploits. And so we're going to talk about developing tests for vulnerable code based off of demonstrations of how to exploit that code. And then finally, we're going to talk about fixing the problem in our code. So we're going to gain experience in rewriting insecure C++ code to remove those vulnerabilities and then use those same tests that we built in the previous step to make sure that the corrected code actually is secure. It's entirely possible to create a patch, rewrite code, and it turns out that the patch doesn't solve the problem. And so it's important after rewriting code to fix a vulnerability to test it again to make sure that vulnerability actually stays fixed. And so this covers our goals for this class, so here we go.